So this session is called SDG Action Change Makers Edition, presented by Prishaya and Anaga. This presentation will cover the SDGs and how you can get engaged in real activism even during a global pandemic. They are presenting in partnership with the AOMUN's 2021 Beast World Conference and will also be taking talking about the MUN and social impact program and how you all can get involved. Prishaya and Anaga, you have the floor. Thank you. Okay, so I'll share my screen. Okay. Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to our MUN Impact Workshop. My name is Priyasha and I'll be presenting alongside my sister Anaga. We're both 18 years old and we're from India, but we've been living in the Philippines for the past 10 years. Today's workshop will be talking about what the SDGs are and how you can tackle them in your own way, even during this unprecedented pandemic. Anaga and I would also like to introduce ourselves as ambassadors for Yale's 2021 virtual MUN conference. So stay tuned for the second half of this presentation when we will be talking about how you guys can get involved with that. Okay, so firstly, we will talk about what exactly are the Sustainable Development Goals. So the 17 Sustainable Development Goals were officially formed at a United Nations conference in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 2012. In 2015, they were adopted by the United Nations General Assembly Summit meeting in New York, and 193 countries agreed upon these goals and have been taking steps to achieve them. The SDGs were formerly, formerly known as the Millennium Development Goals, which was introduced in the 2000s. These were eight goals that the UN member nations agreed to achieve by 2015. Since its inception, UNICEF reported a 44 decrease, 44% decrease in the global numbers of primary age children out of school and also infant mortality decreased. However, the UNICEF executive director, Anthony Lake, claimed that in setting broad goals, the MDGs inadvertently encouraged nations to measure progress through national averages. The MDGs were thus replaced due to its lack of specificity and lack of focus and replaced by the modern SDGs. The SDGs seek to do the same as what the MDGs did, but they do so while also securing a sustainable future in the face of a growing, growing climate crisis. So the first question we'd like to ask everybody is how do you define sustainability? There's no right or wrong answer to this. It's just what you think or any ideas you have when it comes to sustainability. So my sister will be sending out a link um, in the chat and I'll open up this um, little Mentimeter um, brainstorm kind of activity, um, which you can kind of put down what, what does sustainability mean to you? How would you define it? So um, don't think too much about it, just, you know, what words come to mind, um, kind of your own definition of sustainability. So we'll give you guys a second to do so. So yeah, if you just click on um, the link and then define sustainability in your own way. So we'll be able to see like people's responses kind of pop up here. Okay, so I see someone said long lasting. That is definitely a great word to describe sustainability. There's also the ability to manage resources in a way that satis satisfies the present and doesn't compromise for the future. Protecting our future, yes. Um, and then the ability to meet today's needs without compromising the ability of future generations is very much a solid definition of what sustainability means. Inclusive policies, yes, we want the policies to revolve around not only politics and environment, but also economics, cultural and social dimensions. Um, a continuous fight against injustice, yes. If you want to think about sustainable living in the long term, we want to think about um, you know, how to create harmony in society. So it's a, it's a long-term process. Um, adopting practices so that the resources can be used in the future. 
Yes. So all of these are really good ideas and I agree with all of them, using resources for the present generation while saving them for the future. One misconception people do have of sustainability is that it only relates to the environment, which is actually not true and we'll talk more about that. So thank you for participating in this, acti in this activity. Okay. So now we're going to watch a quick video kind of wrap summing up what the SDGs are. Okay, so now we kind of look what we looked into the definition of sustainable development goals and just that little video. So now my sister is going to send out another link to a jam board, which is basically like a whiteboard and we'll do this little activity to kind of like get to know everybody and what sustainable development goals are interested in. So if you have any troubles viewing this, just let us know um, in the chat. But um, so yeah, once it loads, there should be kind of a page that looks like this. So I can see um, people coming in. Um, so as you can see in the center of the Jamboard, there is the sustainable development goals for your reference. And then above there's a question, which is which one SDG do you believe needs to be addressed more in your community? So to answer this, I gave an example posted out here. I said, I'm Anaga, so I introduced myself where I'm living currently. And I said that I believe that SDG 13, which is climate action, needs to be further addressed in my community. So I want um, everyone to try and contribute to this. So all you have to do is on this left side here, click on the post-it note like so, and then you can just type up. Don't think too much about it, just think about in your immediate community, which SDG you think needs to be further addressed. So we'll give everyone um, a few minutes to do so. And yeah. So when you guys are um, answering this, think about, you can think about um, at a local level in your country, in the community that you're living in, and you can, or you can also think about the country as a whole. So the reason why my sister um, wrote about climate action is because the Philippines, for example, is a, an island country. So it's very prone to natural disasters and the growing intensity of natural disasters, which is a consequence of climate change and increased global warming. So that is why she said that that needs to be addressed more. So we, we see some responses coming in. Um, so Megan lives in Taiwan and believes that no poverty needs to be addressed. Emily lives in the Philippines and also believes that the same should be addressed. So yeah, this is a little idea to kind of get you guys thinking of your immediate community, like what, you know, which SDGs are lacking in terms of focus. Um, so yeah, like we love seeing all of your guys' ideas. You can keep this Jamboard open actually because we'll be coming back to it later and we'd love to see like people give um, their ideas and stuff because it'll allow you to be more successful in 
some of the projects that we will introduce. So just keep this link open and uh, keep thinking about what SDGs. Um, so we have other responses, for example, from India, they believe that SDG 16 needs to be addressed. Which I do agree with that. Um, so yeah, we can come back to this later, but thank you so much for um, giving in your ideas. We love seeing them. Okay. So in the interest of time, we'll move back, but we'll come back to this afterwards. Yeah, so now I'll briefly be talking about how act countries actually work towards um, achieving the SDGs. So you guys can remember this by three A's, awareness, action, and accountability. When it comes to awareness, this basically has to do with education because education is the first step to taking any form of action. So at a micro level, you guys can do this by reading articles and watching videos and even participating in local community based projects like maybe beach cleanups in the Philippines, because that way you can interact directly with the issue and learn more from people who may know more than you. Number two is action at a local level. This can manifest this can manifest itself by through ways such as composting your food waste or thrift shopping your clothes or even consuming less meat at a macro level. The stakeholders include economists, geographers, policymakers, and even UN representatives, because they all work together to debate policies and solutions that will help a country progress more towards the SDGs. So some of these solutions can include subsidizing education or improving the quality of healthcare systems, because all of these small solutions will help the country actually achieve the overall SDG of let's say no poverty. The last one is accountability. This manifests itself through annual conferences and reports held by the UN, along with the 190 plus countries that have signed on to the SDGs. This helps to share data and monitor progress and share best practices as well, because one country can help another in tackling a specific issue. Moving forward, um, we also believe that policymakers should listen to the youth and make their ideas come to life. And this manifests itself by actually stepping out and um, exercising your um, ability to vote in local elections. So now that we've looked into how countries work towards um, advancing the SDGs, let us think of it in a more um, micro community individual level. So being involved in service projects or even small steps to raise awareness, create change and join global movements can be very difficult in this virtual setting. But many creative ways of um, being engaged in service and doing non contact service is possible during this time. So think about potential ways in which you have or could get involved in your immediate community through virtual methods. Um, in fact, attending this summit is actually one way in which you have shown your engagement and your interest in um, being educated and learning about issues such as the sustainable development goals and um, other Gen Z topics. So after this introduction, now we want to talk a little more about the term activism. And this term is closely um, associated with change making. Um, so, yeah. So you all may know what activism means, but there are actually multiple types of activism. The first one is slacktivism, and it can also be um, known as clicktivism. Um, and both of these types are known as a form of passive activism. So slacktivism has really increased during the pandemic. It can be characterized by simply posting petitions, reposting petitions, or reposting images. It does not require much time or effort, and it's not necessarily doing anything to move the issue forward. Similarly, performance activism is another form of a passive activism. Some of you guys may be aware of over the summer when the when people were posting black images on their social media page as a hashtag blackout Tuesday to stand in solidarity with members of the black community. However, it's important to ask yourself if that really helped move the situation forward. Of course, it helped to raise awareness, but it actually did not contribute to systemic change and it did not help address any of the injustices within the police system in the US as well. Yes, signing petitions, for example, signals mass support for an issue, but simply reposting images and signing petitions may seem like a satisfying thing to do, but it is important to also dig deeper and really think about how else you can help. 
And this is defined as real activism. Real activism can even take place with you simply becoming more educated on an issue. This could manifest itself through participating in um, MUN conferences. This is something that Anaga and I have been doing ever since grade nine, and we've seen that it helps us di indirectly engage with some of these issues because we get to see how UN bodies actually make decisions in real life. So we get to kind of interact with these issues. You can also write articles for different publications because that will help you delve deeper into the topic or you can donate to charitable organizations and carry out your own virtual fundraisers or send emails to policymakers even because this can actually signal more of a support and help the problem move forward. Okay, so now that we have talked about the sustainable development goals and activism and how that looks like, we will now be talking about exciting opportunities to make your projects come to life and an ability to get involved with a valuable global experience and use your voice um, for change. So in this part of the presentation, we will be talking more about our partnership with Yale MUN and opportunities for you guys to get involved. So as mentioned previously, my sister and I are ambassadors for Yale MUN's conference in 2021, in January 2021, so it's coming up soon. And Wyman is actually offering this virtual conference experience for high schoolers, which is unlike that of many other universities. So not only will you get to debate with like-minded delegates from all over the world, you will also get to hear from Yale MUN representatives, students at the Yale University, professors, and get insight into the Yale experience. Financial aid is also offered because there's a delegate fee if you want to register. Um, for those under 18, you will need to apply with an advisor fee. So this next part of our presentation, will talk about what MUN is, how to sign up for Wyman's conference in January and some other really special and exciting projects that Wyman is offering for all of you budding changemakers. And if this information is too overwhelming, don't hesitate to ask questions in the end. And we have um, documents with all the relevant links and support that you would need. Okay, so to get started, we will do a little bit of a brainstorm of what exactly is Model United Nations. Keep in mind that Wymon is not solely just about MUN debating. Um, so my sister, and I, my sister is going to send another link to a um, Mentimeter, kind of like what we did at the very start. Um, and regardless if you have done MUN or not, this doesn't matter because it's open to everyone. So what words come to mind when you hear Model United Nations? And if you've done MUN before, this will be great. It'll allow you to um, think about like what words represent the essence of MUN. So yeah, just a few words that you think represent Model United Nations. If you've never heard of MUN before, like think about what you think um, it entails. So you can so see we, this. Yeah, go sorry. ahead. So we see some of these words coming up. Um, diplomacy is a big one because regardless of what country you're representing or what stance you're representing, you always have to be very diplomatic, tolerant, and respectful. Global awareness is what MUN is all about. It helps you engage in issues from everything from sex trafficking in Southeast Asia to the trade war between the between US and China. So even if, um, even if sometimes these, these um, problems may seem very large and um, intimidating, MUN kind of helps you to create resolutions and propose solutions and talk with like-minded delegates to come up with um, a consensus. So collaboration is also very important because oftentimes allied countries work together or enemy countries try to befriend each other. Um, so a resolution for those of you who, who, for those of you guys who may not know, a resolution is basically a document of solutions um, that the United Nations uses in real life to debate on solutions. So one country may propose a resolution and a resolution is made up of multiple clauses. So clause one could be about subsidizing education, for example, 
Clause two could be about raising awareness through internet and social media and advertisement campaigns. And clause three could be more about um, creating a database to monitor progress of countries, for example. So looking at your responses, I'll just like pick out some of the ones that stick out. So obviously diplomacy is the biggest, which is quite fitting because it is a lot about diplomacy and debate, using your words to make your argument, defend your stance, prove your stance. So discussion, debate, collaboration, all of those are uh, very important to this. Um, we also have friendships, being open-minded. Someone's like intimidating, MUN can be intimidating, but it's all about like challenging yourself and you know meeting like-minded delegates. Unity, that's, I really like that word. Um, serious, yes, it does tend to be serious, so not all the time, something very serious. Uh, debating, yes. So yeah, hopefully this gives you guys a better understanding. It at least gives my sister and I an understanding of like what everybody in here thinks about um, Model United Nations. So yeah, people with courts, um, not necessarily, it's a little more of like a United Nations, like General Assembly lecture style. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for participating in this little activity. Okay. So here's a little more information about Wyman. So for now, just uh, listen, and we will be sending out all these links in a document which we'll um, send out later. So just a few things to keep in mind. The Wyman conference is being held in January of January 21st to the 24th of 2021. The registration deadline is um, November 13th, 2020. So throughout the duration, the rest of this presentation, think about if this is something you would like to get involved with, because there are many opportunities and scopes um, if you do. So as we mentioned before, the main part of Wyman is an MUN style conference. So it's a four day international relations um, simulation that's held virtually and you can learn more about global politics, international topics, um, such as the environment and economics, adopt new perspectives and develop comprehensive resolutions on global issues that you care about. So the five core committee organs just means that the different committees that delegates will be debating in. So these are in um, accordance with the United Nations. And don't worry if you don't have too much information on this yet. It's not the most important, but this is just where delegates will be debating. And um, keep in mind that registering for this will also allow you to have more than just a debate experience. You can get to know more about Yale, meet Yale students, um, and how they do their own, how they follow their own passions and projects. So this is a subsidiary project that you can get involved in if you join Wyman as a delegate. And this social impact challenge actually leads very well into our own workshop um, presentation today because it's much more about SDGs. So the theme of this social impact challenge is to empower others. And the mission statement is to learn today and lead tomorrow. Essentially, it's a competition for you or a group of people to work together to propose your own SDG project. So the first step is to identify a problem in your community and then come up with solutions for it. Keep in mind that winners can actually get funding and mentorship to bring these projects to life. And whether or not you choose to get involved with Wyman, this is a very, um, this can be a very enlightening process for you to go through because you may actually be able to come up with, run and pilot your own, or your own organization if you go through this process. So a general timeline for those interested would be this. There are three rounds. The first round ends in December 1. And for that, you have to submit a written idea statement outlining your problem and proposed solution in under 250 words and email it to this email address um, given. And just remember that this is based on any idea that you may have. You may have had an idea for a long time about a problem in your community and you're just not sure how to approach it, how to address it, and, or you need help with it, this is a great opportunity for you to finally be able to tackle that problem. So round two is a longer, more in-depth written application of, over, of no more than 1,000 words. And this gives a detailed recount of the social challenge facing your community and um, your solutions that you're proposing. And this, remember your solution can um, consist of multiple parts. It does not have to necessarily be one concrete solution. 
And the last round is a finalist round, which is from late December to early January, where teams will submit a two to five minute video um, where they will present their finalized ideas to a judge of panelists, uh, to a panelist of judges, a comprised of distinguished faculty and organization leaders. So overall, there are three rounds of this social impact challenge, and it is a very good way for you guys to be involved and be active, like we were talking about activism and change making when it comes to the SDGs. Okay, so, so now I've introduced you to the SDG challenge, the social impact challenge. Um, this might be overwhelming for many of you guys. You may not know where to start when it comes to developing your own project. So here's a short video that talks about the basics, how to start a community project in 10 steps. How to start a community project in just 10 Oh, sorry. How to start a community project in just 10 steps. Step one, idea. Do you have an idea for a project? Great. There are simple steps you can follow to give your project the best chance of success. Step two, research. What gap in the community does your idea fill? Is there a need? Is your project already offered somewhere nearby? In some cases, advocating for changes or joining within existing projects might be the best way to achieve your goals rather than starting a new project. Nothing currently available? Time to lead your own project. Step three, recruit your team. Have you talked with your family, friends, neighbors, and similar groups in the area? What groups, businesses, or organizations might be able to help you? A partnership or team will give you more energy and support. If you get a team, be sure to clearly define who is responsible for each task. Having a team also helps to show that there is community support for your idea. Step four, now some detail. Do you need funding to support your project? Many projects can be run with surprisingly little funds. You may find that donations of goods, services, venues, and people's time are the most valuable resources for your project. If you are considering applying for grants, try linking in with other organizations or groups to help you apply and manage the money. Step five, location, location, location. Do you need a venue for your project? You can approach your local council, sports, or hobby club for casual room hire. Use the great outdoors or think outside the box for other options. How will people get there? Have you thought about access to public transport? How often will you need it? And what time will best suit the people that you want to come? Step six, what if something goes wrong? All projects have risks. Identifying all the risks, you can be confident that your team is ready to handle any problems that arise. Plan ahead. Have you thought about insurance or incorporation? If you are not ready, look into partnerships to help you with these. Do you need permits or special permissions for your project? Talk to your local community development council worker. Do you need a working with children's check or food handling certificate? These can often be done online. Step seven, get the word out. There are lots of options to tell people about your project. Consider which will work best for your audience and idea. Step eight, growing your project. How can you improve your project and keep it going? Consider whether your team would benefit from training, such as project management, grant writing, marketing, or promotion, or maybe something specific to your project like art or exercise skills. How did your project go? Step nine, measure your success. It's a good idea to ask people who took part in your project for feedback and ideas for improvements. You can use this information to improve your project and tell your story to help get more funding, support or community members involved. Step 10, more information. Links to help you are below. Many of these resources and templates can be found free online. Don't forget, there is always someone you can talk to at your local council, neighborhood house or relevant club for help. Good luck. Now, it's your turn. 
Start at step one. What's your idea to improve your local community? So that was a very good kind of overall video of the process that you would go through in creating your own project or organization. But um, for this social impact challenge in particular, you of course don't have to do all of these because the actual implementation of, the, um, of your proposal and all of that will actually come later. Okay, so now my sister and I will be just doing another activity with all of you guys, similar to the whiteboard activity we did, this, uh, we did previously, to help you guys start to brainstorm for this activity. Just keep in mind, again, to, re to reiterate, if you guys want to participate in the social impact challenge, you have to register for the Yale MUN conference, and then you can be part of this. However, if you choose not to be a part of it, please still consider doing our activities just because um, this will help you plan any sort of project for school, for your community. It's a really great um, way to start your own project, especially if you're trying to do that. So my sister will send um, the link to another Jamboard. It's the same one from before, so if you have that open. We're now in page two at the very top, like you can move pages. So while it loads, like everyone can open. Yeah. Okay, so in page two on the top left, I wrote step one. So we kind of, my sister and I kind of thought of our own little mini project idea as if we are doing the social impact challenge. So the first step for the social impact challenge that goes into round one is what is identify a problem. So the problem that I identified is lack of environmental education in the Philippines where I am located. So what I want everyone to do, like someone's already started, take a post note from the left side and I want you guys to think about which SDG does this problem tackle. There can be more than one, um, yeah, so there can be more than one, there's like two to three. So just click on the post-it note and which SDG do you think this problem relates to? And you can go back to page one on this left side and um, look at which SDG, like to look at the different SDGs. So yeah, um, you can have post-it note, just make sure your post-it note is like a good size and not like um, distracting. So just answering the question. So. Once again, the question is, which SDG do you guys think this problem is tackling? So some people said SDG number 13, um, 14 and 15, and the, all of those have to do with environment. So that is absolutely correct. 13 is climate action, 14 is life below water, and 15 is life on land. SDG four is also important to note because four is actually to do with quality education. And the proposal that we, we have come up with here is actually about environmental education. So, yeah. You could also consider maybe gender equality because it's about education. So you have to make sure that like, you know, regardless of your gender, um, everyone's getting access to environmental education, especially in the Philippines, because the country is so vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Um, so yeah, we have other SDGs, 13, 14, 15, 6. So as you can see, oh, as you can see, like they relate to many. So now we'll move on. Um, so here's like the second round kind of of the social impact challenge. So we had to basically take the problem that you chose and develop it into an idea statement. Um, so the idea statement has to include the community, the problem and the solution. So here is my idea statement. 
So the goal is to promote environmental education in five rural schools in the Philippines by donating physical or eBooks on topics surrounding sustainability. So this is my proposed topic. So using post-it notes again, but please do so responsibly. Um, what are some positives and negatives of this proposal? Do you think like, do you think it's too vague? Like what is something good or something um, not so good about this um, proposal? for if, if, I was, if I were to submit this for the social impact um, challenge. So one thing that we could consider with this solution would be that the, that the country level might be too broad. You may choose to focus on a local level instead. In this solution, it says five rural schools in the Philippines, but it doesn't really specify which part of the Philippines. And sometimes if your proposal is too broad, it might be more difficult to implement. Um, it seems that a positive is that there are physical and um, the, phys the option of physical books and ebooks offered because, of course, the rural schools in the Philippines don't always have um, the internet capacity or technology required to um, utilize ebooks. So, if you were to suggest an idea like this, make sure you figure out how exactly you would make it come true. Um, somebody also said that it's good that there is a specific number of schools because that can help you to narrow down your resources and utilize them to the best of your ability. Um, somebody also said that this may need more specifics, maybe a named NGO or organization that can help carry this out. And that is definitely a relevant point because sometimes it might be hard to do this individually. You may have to name the schools and name the people involved in the school so that you can facilitate, make this process easier for yourself. Okay, so hopefully these two steps gave you guys an idea of how to approach at least round one and round two uh, of the social impact challenge. Like this is very orig this is very personal to everybody. Like you can choose um, which topics you want to work on. Um, so yeah, some one other response. I don't think the rural community will be able to do this because of the poverty line. So yeah, it's really important to think about like who you're who you're who you're targeting your efforts to and how you will get it there. You know, if you're, if you're thinking about eBooks, eBooks may not be feasible for rural areas without um, Wi-Fi connection. So these are some things to think about. So thank you for participating in this um, activity. Hopefully like got you guys thinking of what to um, think about when you're planning your ideas. Okay, so now that you guys had some time to look at our ideas, we'll talk a little bit more about some direct and indirect service trips that we have been involved in. So um, my sister and I have really loved being involved in service throughout middle and high school. Um, about two years ago, we decided to start our own little initiative outside of school because we wanted more independence and freedom in running them, in running our service trips instead of doing it with our school, although the opportunities at your school may actually be very much enough for what you're looking for. So we partnered with organizations such as Kids International Ministries and Cotalango Filipino in the Philippines. And we visited them bi-monthly to initiate activities for the kids. We even created documentaries like the one we will watch here in a second to raise awareness about certain medical missions that we attended and even directly donated monetary aid or other useful materials. Creating service organizations like this is something that many people want to do, but it is definitely a long-term commitment because it's important to stay committed to the same beneficiaries or the same organizations and schools so that you can kind of see how they're improving throughout your experience with them. Once the COVID restrictions have hopefully eased, we advise those who, are look, who were looking to get started to start forming partnerships and establish long-term partnerships to um, get in touch with and start your own little organization. So this is um, a video that we filmed from a medical mission that we attended as part of Ram Krishna Mission, which is a Hindu religious 
um, kind of home, a religious home, and they treat different beneficiaries from a lot from around the local area to give them free dentistry and um, pediatric health care. So there's a dental mission happening today as well as some child pediatric care and this is where all the children and their families wait before they go and get their treatment. more dental procedures as well as phys physiotherapy and massages taking place. So this was basically an example of us documenting this medical mission. There were volunteer dentists that came for free to help out the local um, families here. And this is an example also of a kind of occasion where Anaga and I were not able to directly help because we're, we weren't conducting the medical missions, but instead we documented the event for the organization to raise awareness about a, a program like this to target more beneficiaries. Okay, so now we'll be talking about non-contact service. So examples of um, virtual ways of giving back that my sister and I have been involved in. So this is a recent example. So we're part of an uh, organization called Project Puno, which is a youth-led environmental organization. So Puno in Filipino means tree. So it's an environmental organization that aims to increase environmental awareness through its um, social media presence, but also through other service trips. So our recent project was purely virtual. The first part of it was to create an environmental ebook, such as the, uh, the picture in the slide. So the ebook was called Perla's Pasig River Adventures. So Pasig River is a river here in the Philippines. And this story was basically about um, someone who experienced a lot of pollution um, in the river. And the message was basically, you know, taking care of um, your marine environment and your surroundings, which is especially relevant for the Philippines. So this, can com this helped combine my sister and I's love for service and writing as we were part of the publishing of this ebook. So the ebook was one part of the project. The second part of the project was doing a virtual fundraiser that would allow us to buy tablets for local schools. So we hosted an online front fundraiser. We did all the networking necessary. We partnered with organizations and eco-friendly companies to buy tablets for the ebooks. Um, we also got many sponsors. Eventually it was a very successful fundraiser and we raised um, 250,000 pesos. Um, so pesos is Philippine currency. Um, and we were able to buy a hundred tablets or like mini iPads. And we uploaded these eBooks into those tablets and we donated it to hundred students at a local school here in the Philippines called Buyasias Elementary School. We made sure that they had proper Wi-Fi arrangements and this will allow them to learn a little more about why it's so important to um, protect our water, um, the, the river and the water bodies here in the Philippines. Um, so this is what I, we were talking about when we were looking at the Jamboard activity of environmental education. So this is a good example of trying to raise environmental awareness and fundraise in an indirect way. So it's completely non-contact. Other ways you can get involved is for example, baking or um, showing gratitude to frontline workers near you or publishing articles online or just educating yourself. Um, look at virtual organizations that are around you. Um, my sister and I got involved, for example, I got involved with Emmy and Impact over the summer and it gave me a good global platform to kind of network and get opportunities such as presenting in the summit. We also joined um, Project Puno and other organizations that allow us to do what we like um, for a good cause. So these are our examples. Hopefully it kind of helps 
inspire you. Just remember, it's ne it's not easy. It's definitely a challenge doing service, um, you know, virtually and not virtually. So the best thing to do is to have proper planning, which is what the social impact challenge um, allows us to do. So we've talked a lot about what the SDGs are. We've brainstormed about how you can tackle SDGs in your own community, what SDG is most important in your community. And we've also talked about Yale MUN and its social impact challenge, as well as giving you guys some ideas on projects that you can initiate. So what is next? Um, that really depends on what you guys want to do, but we have a document that I will paste in the chat right now. Um, that includes a lot of useful information about the Yale MUN um, partnership that we have, and it breaks down the social impact challenge rounds. So if you want to participate in this challenge or even want to um, allow yourself to brainstorm a little more about a project idea that you have in mind, we encourage you to make a copy of this document and keep it keep it safe so that you can go through it and fill out the different tables and templates that we've kind of created for you and read through the tips that we've given you for those of you who want to join the social impact challenge. So for example, if you're scrolling through, you can see that in round one, I created a table where you where there are four different parts and this has to do with the idea statement. So part A is to identify the issue. Part B is to write a few words about that problem. Um, part C is to bullet point some solutions. This can, like I was talking about an MUN resolution before, this can be all sorts of things. You want it to be a kind of a holistic proposal, not just something that tackles one aspect of the problem. And then part D is to outline the solution in like a paragraph form. And then the end of um, round one would be to put those create a 250 word um, idea statement as a whole, talking about your problems and the solutions. So yeah, that's just a little bit of a summary of the entire document for those of you who are interested. Yeah, and some other kind of um, pointers. So this template, my sister and I just made it together to kind of help you guys approach the social impact challenge. So at the very top here are the most important links you would need. Is a website for um, the website of Yale MUN, a Yale MUN registration. As mentioned before, you have to fill out an application. There's a delegation fee, uh, also an advisor if you're under 18. You can also apply for financial aid if you choose to do so. And the third link is for the Yale Social Impact Challenge. Um, information on that. So reminder that you have to register for Yale MUN to participate in the Social Impact Challenge. Um, and as my sister mentioned, um, you know, this document goes for every round. And even if you're not joining Yale MUN, even if you're not joining the Social Impact Challenge, um, this is a great way to like bring any project you have to life. You know, it talks about identifying issues and then creating solutions. So regardless of the, like, the benefit or like the intention, you guys can always use this template as um, a good way to plan your own projects for any organizations or for yourself. So yeah, this is um, like the one stop shop type of document which has everything from this presentation. So yeah. So now we will be open to any questions if anyone has any you guys can ask anything about SDGs or getting involved with service. Um, and even MUN in general, or the Yale MUN or Social Impact Challenge. But we hope that you guys learned a little bit more about what exactly the SDGs are, if you were not already familiar, and learned more about how to identify problems within your own community. And also, we hope to, that we gave you some inspirations as to what you guys can do in your own communities, even during this pandemic. Um, there are plenty of ways to get involved and we have a lot of faith in Generation Z for being very, very creative with the way that they allow service to keep happening online or they allow or in way, the ways that they come up with the fact that they come up with ways to allow people to keep engaging with global, political, social and economic issues online, for example, through this MUN Impact Summit as well. 
So we definitely recommend everyone to register for Wyman for a great virtual experience, whether or not you're interested in MUN. And if you're not interested in MUN and you've never done it before, we still hope that this was a enlightening presentation for you guys and you got some ideas on how you can move forward with um, becoming a change maker. Yeah, and you know, learning how to pitch your ideas would also be very helpful if you're attending some of the other workshops in this MUN Impact Summit. Because this MUN Impact Summit is about driving your own action. So there are workshops that will teach participants on how to pitch their own idea and come up with their own idea and propose their own idea. So this kind of just um, follows that same kind of idea. So um, while I continue talking, if there's any questions on in the chat, my sister and I will just answer it because we know this is uh, quite a bit of logistics here. We hope it was clear. Um, um, so yeah, um, should we just look through the questions, um, Paolo, or, or are you gonna ask it? Okay, um, so there's a question from Aditya. Aditya and he asked that, uh, how do you attract the investors or the company or an organization to give the grants to your project? So if you're talking about the social impact challenge as a whole, it's basically how you pitch your project. So you just have to make sure that it's very specific, detailed, and that you identify a proper solution, a proper problem and a proper solution also try to make sure that it's something that isn't necessarily being done at a wide scale already because you may want to come up with something new if it's not already been working in the past yeah and um i would also like to add yeah so you're right in saying that funding is one of the most challenging uh things to achieve but just know that especially for the social impact challenge, you don't have to worry about funding uh, directly. But when it comes to your own project, for example, when we were talking about our project Puno, fundraising is obviously very difficult. And a lot of it has to happen online. So, you know, if you have connections or if you find organizations online that are willing to partner with you, um, that's a lot of what MUN Impact does as well. You know, make partnerships with conferences, with schools. Um, it can be very hard to do it on a large scale. So, you know, small scale is also okay. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is from Harnoor from India. And that is, how can we register for the social impact challenge? So the registration of the social impact challenge actually happens after you register through the Wyman website for the conference. Um, so after that, there should be an app, it should direct you through to an app, like after you've paid and everything and confirmed it, it you should be able to the website should direct you to where that is because not only is a social impact challenge a subsidiary project of Wyman, but there is also an art and an essay contest. So all of that should become available once you actually re register and pay for the conference. Um, the next question is from Vishwa. Um, that is how to convince people about the need to act upon the problem. Okay, so yeah, that's actually a very good question. So, you know, you, you want to find a support system around you because it's very difficult to, you know, carry out your own project yourself. But regarding convincing people, there, there are many pressing issues that actually don't take much convincing because everybody is aware that this is a problem. Um, the, the main part here, the main obstacle here is to convince people to do something about it. So everybody knows there, there might be a problem in your community, you know, maybe lack of education or lack of gender equality to name some broad ones, but to be able to do something about it, it's really, it's quite difficult to convince people. So it's really important to maybe find opportunities near you. For example, Emian Impact is a really good platform to meet people who are also motivated to join in the global conversation. You know, talk to your friends, talk to your family, see what you can do kind of on your own. Um, so yeah, that is, that is definitely a hard part on you know, convincing people, but it'll also require effort from your part to step out of the comfort zone. Um, my, my sister and I, like we were very fortunate that our school allowed us to get a lot of service opportunities. So we were ourselves you know, in a community of people who um, really love to be involved in volunteer and outreach work. So that's what helped us.
Okay, we are done. If there are any other questions, please feel free write, to write it on the chat or just pop up and just ask it. Um, I think there's one question from Naduni from Sri Lanka. Is Yale MUN Harvard or Hague? So Anaga and I are not actually familiar with Harvard MUN, but we are with the Hague MUN. Um, basically, Wyman, um, you basically have to write position papers and then debate policy points and resolutions and committees. So I guess that is how Taiman was run or how the Hague MUN is run. So yeah, it's it's just like a typical MUN conference, I would say, except you definitely get much more access into Yale, Yale specific elements that kind of makes this an unparalleled opportunity that you guys can get. Like you can actually talk to professors and even the Yale MUN secretariat to learn more about MUN and even life at Yale. Okay, so we have one more and that's the, the last one because we have to go to the opening ceremony. And so what? are ways you recommend in which we can expand our new projects in order to successfully reach a bigger audience and increase engagement within our community? Okay, yeah, so uh, how to expand your project? Well, we would definitely say, think, consider, the, uh, consider the social impact challenge. And you know, when you're trying to like uh, network to a larger audience, social media is the best way to do it. And sometimes it might be intimidating. Sometimes social media can also be a hit or miss. Like you don't know when you're gonna get engagement or followers or your message across. So it, it's really important to like try different, um, try different methods. So my sister and I really like working with a community or a group of people. We find it hard to sometimes like, do things on our own because there can be many challenges. Um, but it's really important to find like a support system to expand your group or maybe branch out to other countries. Um, so yeah, like, so when you're coming, when you're trying to approach your ideas, really think about planning them properly. So follow a template. So you have all the resources and tools necessary to execute it properly and be set up for more success. 